All right, we're live. Live here with Keikos, and this is Homes at Home. So we're going to be coming every week, going live, and talking to you all about some different topics. Uh, this week, Keikos and I are going to talk about indoor air quality. Where are we, Keikos? Yes, we are. So uh, first, um, I want to know where everyone's from, uh, where you're tuning in from, uh, what you're thinking, how, you, how everyone's holding up. Uh, my wife, Lisa Marie, and I, we're at home and um, staying isolated. We're staying safe. We're getting lots done around the house, trying to do as much as possible to uh, stay positive with this time. And uh, now we're staying productive. We're filming everything and there's going to be lots of content coming out for all of you. Um, for today, though, uh, I want to talk about indoor air quality. So first and foremost, did you know that there is two to five times more pollution indoors than outdoors? And we spend approximately 90% of our time during our life indoors. So this is a, a, an extremely important topic that uh, we're going to talk about today because if we're spending over or approximately 90% of our time indoors and uh, that is two to five times more uh, toxic air quality indoors, then we got to think about indoor air quality in our home. Now where do we start with that? Uh, some Something that I like to educate everyone on is radon. Um, a lot of people don't know much about radon. Radon is a natural occurring gas that comes from underground. It, it comes from uranium, which turns into radium, which then turns into radon. Now, radon, because it is a gas, it's odorless, colorless. You can't see it. You can't taste it. You can't smell it. And you can't hear it. So you don't know what's in your home. Radon is also the number one cause for lung cancer. Um, oh, can you... The camera... Sorry, uh, radon is the number one cause for lung cancer um, for non-smokers. So if you're a non-smoker, what this what it does is uh, these radon particles, you, you breathe them in. And over long-term high-level radon exposure, you can get lung cancer. So it, it's something we want to test for, we want to detect. And the good news is it's relatively cheap to test for and it's easy to test for. So if you go to radoncorp.com, so Radon Environmental, they have different test kits. They have the Rad Track and the Rapidos. The Rad Track is a long-term test kit for Radon. So what I would suggest is setting this up in your basement if you have one or a crawl space or anywhere that um, you know Radon can seep into your home. So usually in the basement, if you have a crawl space, anywhere that's touching the earth, um, Radon can get into your home. If you have a sump pit, if you have a floor drain in your home, cracks in your concrete, which most of us have all of these things. So that's one of the areas radon can get into your home. Uh, other areas they can get in, um, actually, sorry, other areas they can get in is, again, like your foundation walls, anywhere touching the earth. So during the winter months, when you have all your doors closed, your windows closed, trying to keep all that heat inside, that is when your radon levels can be higher. So I would recommend getting the Rad Track 2, setting that up in the basement um, during the winter months, and it's a, about a three month test period. And then you can send that into the lab and find out if you have high levels of radon. If you do, what you need to do is have a professional come in to install a radon mitigation system. Now, what this system does is it hooks up a fan to a tube essentially that goes underneath your concrete slab and it pumps all that radon gas out into your neighbor's house. I'm just kidding. It, it just pumps it outside. It doesn't go out into your neighbor's house. It pumps it outside where it's not uh, harmful to you or others. So you want to make sure you're testing for radon. Um, other things you can do, you can have a, uh, a radon detector in your home, much like a smoke or carbon monoxide alarm, and it'll actually go off if you have over the allowed amount of becquerels or picocurrents if you're in the United States. Um, so there's lots of ways to test and keep your home safe against radon. Uh, other things we need to worry about for indoor air quality is mold. Mold, uh, formaldehyde, VOCs. VOCs, first of all, are volatile organic compounds. Uh, we know these aren't great for us. Um, they're in paints, perfumes, your aerosol cans, your finishes, your husbands, your wives. Uh, those ones are much less dangerous though. Um, but VOCs, we as a responsible homeowner, what I would suggest doing is try and use paints um, that have zero VOCs. So uh, my wife has a signature collection paint line. It's zero VOCs, um, stuff like that, finishes that have zero VOCs. Carpets usually have high VOCs. So just be conscious with anything you're putting in your home and, and ask the questions. Ask the important questions about, you know, are there VOCs in this? Is there zero VOCs that I'm using? 
um, mold. Mold, you know, our homes are a breeding ground for mold. And this isn't to scare you, but if you think about uh, if hot meets cold, that creates condensation. Then in our home, we have drywall, we have framing, which is wood. So you combine the two and you get mold. Now we want to avoid that. And a good way to avoid that is by building better. So if we thermally break our homes, if we insulate from them from the outside, that stops uh, hot from eating cold. So that eliminates the condensation. Another area that uh, we can get a lot of moisture, you know, is your basement. So you don't want to put flooring uh, directly onto the concrete floor in your basement. If you do, you can use a product like Andry. Um, it's, a, it's a flooring. It essentially is a, uh, a raised flooring with a moisture barrier on the bottom. And it has little tracks on the bottom. So say you get water in your basement. It allows the water to go towards the drain and not soaked up into, let's say, your hardwood floor, your carpet, whatever you might have down there. So just preventative building and building better. Um, other areas are obviously your bathrooms. Now, I'm not going to tell you to stop showering or to stop bathing, especially when we're spending all this time at home. You'll drive your significant others insane. But just having a bathroom built better, for starters, or having a bathroom fan that ventilates outside and not into your attic space. Um, that is key. Ventilation is key. So by building your bathroom better, by using products like uh, Ditra, Curdy, which are made by Schluter, they are waterproof uh, membranes. They do other great things as well, uh, like they are, they are uncoupling membranes as well. Sorry, Ditra is an uncoupling membrane. But what we're talking about today is waterproofing. If we waterproof the bathrooms, we stop water from coming in anywhere else. So that is very important because if water does, you know, let's say we have a leak in our bathroom, it gets behind the tile, then that dribbles down onto our drywall, starts creating mold down there, that's a problem. So if we can contain it to one area onto a waterproof membrane, directing it to the floor drain, we don't have to worry about mold. So again, building better is very important. Now, there's other things in your home that you should consider um, as well for better air quality. You know, air purifiers, there's some really good quality air purifiers out there. Uh, Furnace filters, how many people here, you can say in the comments or not, whether you've checked your furnace filter or if you have, or if you're even aware if you have a furnace filter, um, let me know in the comments. Just if you do have a furnace and a forced air system, go check your furnace filter. Most of them, you know, whether you're changing the month, every couple of months, at least check them to make sure if they're clogged because if, they, if your furnace filter is clogged, you are breathing in all that debris, all that dirt, all that dander, that your furnace filter is trying to stop you from breathing in. So that's one good place of starting is your furnace filter. Another place uh, is an HRV, a heat recovery ventilation system. So uh, Ernie's story, change it every month, exactly. Um, HRV, heat recovery ventilation system. It, it is, uh, what it does is it, it exchanges the stale air in your home with fresh air outside. So that is a great way to actually bring down radon levels. Um, it is a great way to bring down VOC, bring down other poor indoor air quality levels, but just by bringing in fresh air. Now we do have some other questions I wanna start answering from some people because I wanna make sure we get them all answered. Uh, these are all indoor air quality related. So Susan asks, our home was built in the mid forties. It's a small town and apparently we're on a high water table. Our first spring we realized what they meant. Every spring or heavy rain, our basement is wet, sometimes flooded. We had a new sump pump and backup installed last year. The water will even come up in the middle of the floor. We don't have mold down there and I've used different products that is supposed to kill mold, but I don't believe it's working. Obviously, if money wasn't an issue, I have the entire basement done properly. I've had a company in that says just that, sp sorry, that they'll spray the walls for $24,000, but they, that won't take care of the water coming up or all the sides. So I'm guessing our air quality would be very poor. Any suggestions? So first of all, Susan, I'm not sure um, what company you're talking about that says they're gonna spray the walls and what they're spraying on the walls for $24,000, but that's a lot of money. There's a few places you wanna start. Looking on the outside of your home, uh, the grating. If the grating is sloped towards your house, that means that anytime there's a rainfall, it's going to drive that rain towards your home. Anytime there's snow outside and it thaws, it's going to drive that water towards your foundation. So that could be a potential problem. Uh, another problem could be your weeping tile on the outside of your home. Maybe it's clogged up with roots. Uh, maybe you need to install a French drain. But the best place to stop water from coming in is not from the inside. 
it's from the source itself, so from the outside. So if you waterproof the exterior of your foundation, that will be a, a good way to stop water from coming in. If it's coming up through your floor drain, have someone, have a professional come in, scope your drains, see what's going on, uh, and, and don't just get your foundation sprayed. As for your air quality, stay on top of it. Make sure you have uh, mold tests done. Check, see if there's mold growing. If you smell a musty smell, which you probably do in your basement because you're getting water in it, then I would have someone come in and take a look at it. Now, Glenda has a question. Glenda, one question is how do you test for radon? We have usual cracks in the basement floor. Second, what do you think about an all house humidifier? So Glenda, um, again, uh, Radon Environmental, they make uh, radon test kits. So if you go to radoncorp.com, you can order test kits from there. Or if you're more confident bringing in a professional to test it, you can do that as well. But they have two test kits. There's a short-term test kit called the Rapidos and the long-term test kit, which is called the RadTrack 2. Um, long-term is always more accurate because it's testing out your the uh, back rolls uh, over a long period of time. You're best testing it in the winter when your doors and windows are closed to give you an accurate level of how much radon is in your home. So it's not that complicated to test for and it's not that expensive. And to mitigate it, it's not that expensive either, but just get it tested to start. Um, whole house humidifier, it's a great idea. Um, it helps you regulate the humidity in your home without having to have little humidifiers everywhere that you're topping up with water. Um, it's, it's tapped into uh, the source itself, so a water line that constantly regulates that once you set the humidity in your home. It helps regulate the humidity so it's better for you, better for your home, um, and better for your energy bills. So next question, Rob, why is it that every morning I'm stuffy? Where do I look in my bedroom? What could be the issue in there? It's nowhere else, and when my small child crawls into my bed and wakes up, he has a runny nose in the morning, and I don't know why or what could be the issue in there. Also, I don't know where to look or what to consider. I've looked for mold and moisture, and I can't find any. Okay, Rob, so uh, a couple things. What kind of flooring do you have in your home or in your bedroom? If it's carpet and you've had maybe spills in there, leaks, or maybe the person before you had a little flood, there could be multiple things going on there. The carpet could actually be trapping allergens. It could be trapping mold in there. If there's a spill in there, maybe they had pets before or they smoked. All of these things could be triggering um, your immune system and, and affecting you. So if you do have carpet, take a look at that. Um, and if you don't, if you have some sort of other flooring, let me know. Write me a comment back and I can start to uh, source out some other solutions for you. Now, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn says, hi, Mike Jr. We know our home should have fire alarms, but what other alarms do you recommend to help people monitor or be aware of air quality issues in their home, i.e. CO2 or radon? Um, are there any others? Yes, there are, Gwendolyn. So that's a great question. There, there is a, uh, an alarm called the Victoria. And again, if you go to radoncorp.com, you can find the Victoria there. And it's like it acts like a uh, CO2 alarm. So it will actually let off an audible sound as well as a visual if you're if anyone is hearing impaired or let's say you're a heavy sleeper, you wear earplugs, it can wake you up that way. Um, but it will let you know if you have high radon levels in your home. So that's another great solution again to test or sorry to, to find out if you have poor indoor air quality in your home. Let's see. Jean Paul, how can I get more cold air volume on the second story floor? I have a four ton central air unit installed with an old oil forced air furnace combo. Warm air, warm air volume is okay all over, but in the summer, I do not get enough cold air in the second floor. Okay, so I would suggest, Gene, sorry, Jean Paul, that you have a professional come in and balance your HVAC system. So if it's not balanced, what can happen is it's pumping more air in certain areas and not enough in other areas. So try that, get a professional to come in, balance your system and see how that works. Um, if not, maybe it's that you don't have enough insulation in certain areas. And what's that, what that's doing is the air is pumping in that room, but if it's hot outside and you're pumping cold air in there, then all the heat is just drawing that cold air out. Let's see, I think we have time for one more question. We've got some good ones here, let me take a look. Hmm, oh, so many questions to choose from. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, how 
Gene says, how often should we do a radon test? So I would personally recommend annually, uh, if not two times annually, you can check um, in the winter and then maybe in the summer just to see what the differences are in your indoor air quality, uh, especially if you're pumping AC in your home and you're keeping all of that uh, air contained and you don't have an HRV or anything like that. It's good to monitor the air levels in your home. So uh, again, just test the air quality in your home. If you have an HRV, that's great. Make sure it's running, getting that fresh air inside. If you haven't tested your home for radon, again, radon is the number one cause for lung cancer. Order a test kit from radoncorp.com. Um, make sure that you don't have mold in your home. Get an indoor air quality test for your mold spore count. Find out what you're breathing in because again, the indoor air quality we're breathing in is actually worse than what we're breathing in outside and we're spending about 90% of our time inside. So indoor air quality matters. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in to Homes at Home. Again, we're talking indoor air quality. If you have any questions, write them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you and we'll see you next week. Also, uh, my wife will be on next week. If you wanna tune in, find her on Lisa Marie Homes on her Facebook page. She'll be on talking, uh, not sure what she's talking about yet, but tune in to find out.